Today's scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3 of the New King James Version. Let us read in unison. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was at called Niger, Lucius of Serene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. May the Lord bless us upon the reading of this word. Be seated. Thank you very much, choir, for that wonderful song. Uh, especially hearing again my favorite soloist, Tita Beng. Yeah. Whenever I hear Tita Beng singing, I always uh, I always being reminded of a famous person way back 1980s, eh? Sandy. Uh, no, 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 Sandy Andolong. <laughs> but I love you, Tita Ben. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. If I will ask you today this question, what is the main business of the church? What would be the first thing that would come into your mind? Ano po, unan yung may isip. What is the main business of the church? Well, some of you would say that is to take care of its members. The church is here to visit the sick, pray, pray with them, to take care of people at important transitions in life, such as marriage, childbirth, and even death. Others would say, it is here to provide guidance and comfort for people at important times. Mahalaga rin yon. No doubt, these are all functions of the church. However, I would argue that these functions are not the main business of the church. We are always in danger of slipping into a maintenance mentality sa atin sa church where we focus on maintaining what we have and the tendency is to forget about the lost. We oftentimes think that the church is here for us. And we forget that we are the church and we are here for the lost world. Several years ago now, sa isang city in Pittsburgh, USA, they constructed a large new post, post office at the cost of several million dollars. So, bagong post office. On the day of its opening, the governor made a speech. A grand band played and the people cheered. It was a grand celebration. Yung grand opening ng post, of, post office. However, when the first man entered to mail a letter to the embarrassment of the engineers, it was discovered 
because they were in a rush to meet the deadline, they forgot to put the letter drop or yung tinatawag nating mailbox. Here is a costly new post office, but no place to mail a letter. It was a slight omission. Nakalimutan lang. Napakaliit lang naman. But it negated the very reason of its existence. Nawalan ng saysay yung millions na ginastos nila. Yung ganda ng ginawa nila. Because they cannot even mail a letter. Wala yung mailbox o yung, bag, yung hulugan ng letter. Now, this brings me to the very point of this message. Today, I'll talk about the mission of the church being missions. We read earlier, uh, yung ating text found in uh, Acts 13, verses 1 to 3, but I've included verse 4 in there. So this brings me to the very point of this message. When any church loses the spirit of the Great Commission, it surrenders the very reason of its existence. You know, tignan nyo po ito. Looking at God, God is a missionary God. The Bible is a missionary book. The gospel is a missionary message. The church is a missionary institution. And when the church ceases to be missionary minded, it has betrayed its trust. Essentially, the church has many responsibilities. You have just watched our video. We are in the middle of a very hectic schedule. Our church, every summer, busy, busy po ang church. We have so many responsibilities, but we only have one mission as a church. And that is the evangelization of all nations. A church that is not focused on the world is a church that is not founded on the word. So allow me to share to you three important things, three important truths that we need to remember. That as we study the word we have read earlier, may the Lord continually bless us as he speaks to us and deliver us his wonderful truths and challenges. First thing to, re to be reminded of is this first truth. Number one, the church is the incubator for missions. So you see a little baby there placed in an incubator. Yeah, no? In verse 1, ganito po yung sinasabi ng talata. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Nigger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Here we see the local church. The local church is the place where missions are born. Missionaries are being born. It, is, it was the incubator for missions. They were at the church doing something. They were praying. They were fasting. This missions movement was done out of a local church. We praise the Lord for many mission organizations, many parachurches involved in missions. But mind you, missions is being birthed sa local churches. Missionaries are born from local churches, are birthed from local churches. When God was about to launch the first great missionary movement through one of its apostles, in fact, through that man who would become the greatest of all the apostles, he did so based of a, the context of a local church. Nasa loob sila ng church. 
nagsisilbi, naglilingkod. Look at the person next to you. Please ask that person, naglilingkod ka ba sa church? A local church was God's starting point. And we as a church, it should be our starting point. If any church is going to be an incubator for missionaries and missions, they must recognize first, no? Tignan po natin, no? It mentioned here several people. Sabi rito, no? We must recognize the pleasure of God in saving people from every tribe, from every tongue, people and nation. In this church, there was a diversity in composition. Sino-sino po itong mga binanggit kanina? Well, it was mentioned here, Barnabas. If you will take a look at the history of Barnabas, Barnabas is a Levite. He is a Levite from Cyprus. It also mentioned Simeon, called nigger, which means black. So, most scholars presume he was black. So definitely, there was no race distinction here. Everyone was included. Another mentioned he is Lucius of Cyrene. He came from an ancient city in North Africa. Also mentioned is Manaen, who brought up with Herod, who stole Herodias from her husband and eventually murdered John the Baptist. Medyo iba pinanggalingan ito. But still, he was included in the church. And Saul, who would later become Paul. He is from Tarsus. Here was a diversity to be sure, to be sure of. Tayong lahat. No, wag tayong pipili. Wag tayong, wala tayong itatangi. We should consider everyone. We should reach out to everyone. Here were Jews and Gentiles, both wealthy and common, and all chosen and all controlled by the Holy Spirit. Ang galing, ano? Now, what struck me here about verse 1 is how God can work through all different types of people which we've seen coming from different backgrounds, cultures, and identities. And yet, God was working through all of them. Walang pinili ang Diyos. If that would be the case, di po ba dapat wala rin tayong pinipili? In this church, there was unity in character. If we will take a look now at verse 2, look at this, what these five guys were doing. They, were, they all ministered to the Lord. They were ministering. They were doing, they were fasting, they were praying. In essence, they were serving. No? So we see here yung kanilang yung kanilang calling, yung kanilang gifts, yung dapat nilang gampanan bilang mga alagad ng Diyos, they were doing all of these things. They were godly men, they were spiritual men, they were sincere men, all ministering in the local church. So if we were to be involved no, in missions, be reminded, brothers and sisters, the local church is the incubator for missions and missionaries. Number two is this. Remember that the Holy Spirit is the initiator of missions. In verses 2 and 4, ganito po yung sinasabi, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. The Holy Spirit issued the call for these missionaries. To make it simple and plain, the Holy Spirit spoke. The Holy Spirit speaks. In other words, the Holy Spirit is not some impersonal force, but rather the Holy Spirit is a person, fully God, and one who as God 
is the divine initiator. Hindi po siya yung Holy Spirit na sa matagal pa noon, iniisip natin parang hangin, na parang dumaan lang. In this case, we see that the Holy Spirit is the one who initiated the calling. Very clear, the Holy Spirit set apart. Tinawag si Paul at si Saul. I si, si Saul, or rather, si Saul at si Barnabas. We see here two kinds of calling. Doon sa nangyari pong ito. First is, we see that it is a selective calling. The mere fact that the Holy Spirit mentioned Barnabas and Saul, it is a distinctive call. It is a distinctive call. It was not for everyone. It is not for everyone. It is worth our attention to note that the call came while they were ministering. They were ministering. Diba? Sabi dun sa early verses natin. Sabi po doon, uh, in verse... Verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So they were ministering, no? When God looks for a man or woman for ministry, take note, He always looks for people who are servants. The word ministering here means they were serving. Ministry is equivalent or synonymous to serving. So humble servants are the kind of men and women that God wants to use. God will not use people who needs dusting off, who haven't been doing anything. So sometimes maybe you, know, you may be receiving a, a call from God at the middle of something, you're doing something, you know, sabihin mo kay Lord, Lord, Lord naman, busy ako eh. Ito yung magandang prinsipo na natutunan ko. Ang Panginoon hindi tatawag ng tamad o yung walang ginagawa. In fact, God will always entrust the work or ministry to people who are busy because meron ka ng track record. In the first place, wala, naniniwala ako na wala naman taong tamad. Meron lang dalawang klasing busy na tao. And isipin mo na kung nasaan ka doon. Yung unang busy is this, being under Satan's yoke. Yun yung isang klasing busy. Yung isang klasing busy is this, being utilized to serve Yahweh. Now, nasaan ka? What type of a busy person are you? Na? So, dalawang klase lang daw yon. So, we see here, it is a, it is a call, no? distinctive call for them. He uses the ones that are in the middle of it. Mentras mas marami kang ginawa, hindi mo ba napapansin, mas lalo kang tinatawag ni Lord. When God called Gideon to lead the Israelites to fight against the... Uh, Sino nga ba yung kalaban nila, Pastor Noy? Na, nawala sa ano ko? Sino nga ba yung ano nila, kalaban nila, ni Gideon? Midianites? Yeah. The Midianites. What was Gideon doing? He was pressing grapes. Di ba? Busy siya eh. May ginagawa siya. But God entrusted to him a larger work. When God called the fir- when Jesus called the first disciples, what were they were what what were they doing? They were fishing. No? They were fishing. Mga may trabaho sila. And yet, lahat sila sumunod. They followed and obeyed God's call for the ministry. Another is it is a specific calling. Sabi po dito sa verse na binasa natin, for the work to which I have called them. So meron nang ipinagkatiwala, no? Meron ng work na nakahanda. So the calling to service was made before it was announced. They were not allowed to choose their own fields. 
They were not allowed to, to choose a particular work. God had a specific work for them to do. Just as God did not call just anyone, He did not call them to do just anything specific po. God had a certain work in mind when we, He called them into service. Recently, I made, I made a step of faith. For three years, I have been using this ex- excuse. I, I, I have a, an expired passport. For three years, excuse ko yan. Hindi ako nagre-renew. And for three years then, the call and invitation for me to become a short-term missionary to serve in Pakistan is always been continuously offered to me. But this year, I met a dead end. Sabi sa akin ng Panginoon, ano? Susunod ka ba o hindi? That's where reality struck me. That's why now I have a schedule to renew my passport this coming end of May. And Lord willing, whatever He plans for me to do, according to His plan and purpose, that I will do. Because God already has a work for each and every one of us. He has a specific work and a specific person para gawin yon. The fact that God's calling is selective and specific, it is encouraging for us. Because it reaffirms how personal His map is for each and every one of us. God is a very personal God. Hindi po siya yung parang maghahagis ng granada, sino tamaan sa pool. No. God has planned and purposed a specific work for a specific person such as you. Now, if you will not obey that, it's that it's your issue with God. Kayo po magtutuos ng Panginoon. Hindi po ba? It affirms how personal that map God gave and developed for us. Ganun po kaganda ang plano ng Diyos para sa atin. Lastly, na gusto ko pong ipa, ipa, share sa inyo is this. Number three. Believers in the church are the investors in missions. So we have the local church being the incubator. We have the Holy Spirit being the initiator. And now, the believers in the church, kayo po, tayo po, ang investor sa missions. In verse 3, Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. The sending of missionaries is church-centered, church-supplied. And if you will read the following chapter, Church supervised. The very reason our satellite pastors are here because we practice that. Sa atin po nagmula ang mga pag-send off ng mga gawain ng missionaries, church-centered, church-supplied, and church-supervised. The Great Commission is a call and command to every believer. Every believer is to be part of the gospel being preached unto all nations and to every creature. If you will ask me, how is this possible? Napakalaki palang gawain. Napala- napakalaking task. How can this be accomplished? Dalawang bagay po ang kailangan natin gawin na nakita natin dito sa binasa nating verses. Number one, for that to be accomplished and to be done, Para mangyari yon, purses or wallets have to be opened. Dapat ho magbukas tayo ng pitaka. Not every person is called to go to the foreign mission field or to the local mission field. But, every believer can be a partner with those who are called by making contributions that enable the missionary to go. 
kailangan po nila ng bala. Kailangan po nilang may tutulong sa kanila. Dahil hindi po sila nagpunta doon para maging turista. Hindi po sila nagpunta doon. They're not there for a vacation. They are there to accomplish God's calling, to reach out that particular area, that particular country for the Lord Jesus Christ. And they cannot do it alone. They need our help. They need our support. To put it very simply, if we are not actually called to go to a mission field, then we are called to give so that those who are called can go. I will not ask this anymore because I have proven this for the past years that we are doing this. Ang mga pitaka na mga icons, bukas na bukas. Amen ba? Amen? Amen. Hindi po mahirap lumapit sa mga taga-ICA kung meron po tayong gawain at meron tayong kailangan tugunan. It may not have been the case several years ago. But definitely, now the Holy Spirit is meron ginagawang pagbabago sa ating iglesia. And I praise the Lord for that. We are giving so that those whom God has called can go. We become channels of blessing so that those who are called to be missionaries can go. Number two, if we need to open our purses and wallets, we also need to pray for people going to missions. We need prayers. Prayers have to be offered. These believers not only open their purse for others, but they also offer their prayers for them. Sabi po doon, no? Having fasted and prayed and laid hands. So they prayed for these people before they sent them out. They, also, they offered their prayers for them. Who is going to the mission field on your giving and praying? Tanong ko po sa inyo. Marami po tayong endeavors. Our focus here for this year is cross-cultural. Are you willing to take the challenge when God calls missionaries and mission endeavors dito po sa iglesia, are you willing to give and pray for these people whom God has called and set apart? Now, one of the significant points here is that the local church who sent the early missionaries out, Barnabas and Paul would later return to the church at Antioch to report Ayan, ang ganda. So every time, no? every time God sends out, God makes sure that they would return so that we would hear the great stories God has done in the mission field. Ang ganda po ng ginagawa ng Panginoon. Ang ganda po ng ginawa ng Panginoon here, dito po sa Acts. At yan din po yung pwede nating gayahin. They reported to the church after their missionary journey, because they were sent out by the church. For one week, we have been stay, ano, magkasama po kami nila, Pastor Jim Boy, Pastor Henry. And yung kanina, yung report nila kasi, they, 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 ano lang, no, kinondense lang nila, no, for, uh, kinompress lang nila for about five minutes yung kanilang report. But hearing their, what God has been doing to their churches, respective churches, for the past year, Ay grabe, ang ganda-ganda pong pakinggan. Ang sarap pakinggan, knowing tayo pong lahat ay kabahagi na ginagampanan ng Panginoon at sila ay napapakinabangan ang mga manggagawang ito that God may be honored and be glorified and be preached to their respective areas and provinces. So they are returning, they are giving report because they know they serve and worship a victorious God. Kaya ang ganda-ganda, no? napanood natin. We see the pictures, we heard the stories. Later on, you can maybe invite them to lunch, whatever. Marinig pa ninyo yung mga gandang kwento ng Panginoon sa kanilang buhay. And you'll be encouraged. And you'll be blessed hearing these stories. In closing is this. 
if the business of the church is not about God's business, then the church has no business being in business. Gets nyo? <laughs> Ulitin natin. If the business of the church is not about God's business, then the church has no business being in business. Sa may taon po ng uh, isang taon, one town in uh, Bohol, ang town po niya ay Lubok. Pastor Jimbo is from Loon. Tama? So yung Lubok, a town in Bohol called Lubok, built a bridge way back 1970s. They constructed a bridge. It commenced construction early 70s, but was left unfinished. Hindi po natapos yan. Left unfinished, allegedly due to the opposition from the Lobok parishioners since the construction of the bridge will affect or ultimately destroy the 400-year-old Lobok Church. So since 1970s, hindi po natapos yung bridge na yan. Ang tawag po dyan ay bridge to nowhere. <laughs> bridge to nowhere. Walang dinuktungan. May inumpisahan, walang dinuktungan. Today, years later, if you will visit that bridge, the bridge looks as new as the day it was constructed. Why? Because there's no road leading to it. Ano pong point ko doon? Ito pong point ko. A bridge that doesn't carry load or traffic is a bridge that is in name only. In short, to make it simple, isang tulay na walang pakinabang. And a church that doesn't go with the gospel is a church that is in name only. To be simple, isang church na walang pakinabang. Every Christian within this local church is to be personally and actively involved in Christ's command to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If God wills the evangelization of the world and you refuse to support missions, then you are directly opposed to the will of God. The supreme task of the church is the evangelization of the world. Today I make this formal call and appeal to the church that we now, as we start our programs in the heat of the in the middle of our programs doing missions, we need your help. We need your support. We need your prayers. We need your contributions to purchase Bibles, to fund our activities. Napakalaki po ng gawain, pinagkatiwala ng Panginoon sa atin. The Lord entrusted us a great work. And I am challenging you to respond accordingly. My last slide, please. Borrowing a quote from David Livingstone is this. Christ alone can save the world. But Christ cannot save the world alone. Kasama po ba kayo? Are you with Christ to reach the world? Are you part of the problem? Or are you part of the solution? Are you willing to get the gospel to some area in the Philippines or even some area in the world where God is not preached? I pray to the Lord. We are just like the early church. When God called men and women to do this particular task, the church responded accordingly. Let's pray. Father God, Thank you 
for this opportunity that your truth has been preached. Thank you, Lord God, that you have issued this challenge for us, Lord God. And as your people coming together being as a church, as your church, we are responding, Lord, as you have designed us to become. And that is to fulfill the very one mission you have given us, that the gospel will be preached, that the gospel will be heard everywhere, that we will go wherever you want us to go, Point, point, Lord. Point to us where you want us to go. Show us, Lord, what you want us to do. Just like Isaiah, we respond. Here we are. Use us. Father God, we know there is no challenge so big, Lord, for you. Even though that we may say, we may see up front a tremendous task, a challenge in front of us. But we just thank you that we can rest on the truth that you are a bigger God. You are a greater God. And that through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we can do, we can accomplish, we can be victorious. In all things. Continue to spur our hearts, Lord God. Pukawin mo ng aming mga puso. Alisin mo kami sa mga bagay na nakakapag-distract ng aming paningin sa iyo that tends us to become busy in other things and not in your business. This is my prayer, O oh Lord. This is my prayer for this church. For us to become busy in your business, Lord God. Nothing else. Wala nang iba. Help us, Lord God. By your power, by the authority you have given us. That we may be able to reach more people, Lord God. And share Jesus Christ to them. That they may also come in the knowledge and saving grace of your one and only Son who gave his life as a ransom for our sins and lives. Salamat, Panginoon. Truly, Lord, you are great. You are good. And you alone deserves our praise, honor, and glory. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.